Hi there, in this video here I'm going to run you through how to get your Victron system online so you can see a VRM portal online, so connecting your Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So let's get in here, let's get started. Run through a few things. <clears throat> you want to come down here to settings. We'll zoom in a bit. Here we go. So I'd normally just start from the top and just work your way down. It's probably the best way. So if this is the first time you're in here, and a lot of this stuff for me is gonna be online already. So as you can see, you wanna come down here, make sure you've got user and installer, remote support you want that on. That's gonna actually allow someone to log in and do anything to your system if you need help from someone. So you wanna make sure there. This here, it'll likely say offline. Mine says off online because it's actually already online, already on there. So you wanna be able to see it online. So we'll come back out here. Now the firmware, to be able to update the firmware here, you're going to make sure it's online before you can do any of this sort of stuff. So we'll jump back out here. Remote console. You want to come down and make sure this disabled password check is ticked. We'll just click on it. Let's reduce that zoom a bit. There we go. Looks a bit better. And you want to come down here and make sure it's enabled on VRM. So when it's blue, it's VRM. And you can see the remote console, the status is online. So that makes you means it's connected. So in your situation, you'd probably say offline. It's not there. Let's go back out here. Come all the way down to Wi-Fi. Now I'd highly recommend if you have an ethernet connection is to use it where possible. Now, if you log in here, what will actually happen? If you've got an Ethernet connected and it says unplugged, they could, and you've got something plugged in, there could be an issue on your end on your internet. So something to check out and think about. The way I think about it is go get your laptop, turn off your Wi-Fi, plug your laptop into it. I know it's really hard with a Mac because they actually don't have that Ethernet connection. But plug something else into it and just double check. Most of the time, it's a connection on your end. There's a cable or something like that that's a problem. But yeah, if, you can, if you've got Ethernet, I would highly recommend you use it, get it connected. But most people use Wi-Fi. I use Wi-Fi. Mine's pretty reliable, and I've actually got a modem right next to it. So, um, come into Wi-Fi here, and you want to come down to your Wi-Fi networks. And as you can see, you can see all the different Wi-Fi networks available. Mine's connected to the Bat Cave. You know, see your state up here says connected. When you come down here, we'll actually say if you're not connected, it's actually going to ask you to enter in your password. So you're going to enter your password in. Once you've entered your password in, you're going to see this is connected. And then that's why it's really important Then you come back and you go and you flick through everything and make sure all these other statuses. So go back up here. Just check that VRM online portal. And what you'll see in here, you'll see it's enabled. Your ID, this is your ID. So if you're wanting someone to give you help and support, you're going to want to give them this ID here. What will happen when you give them the ID? They'll ask for access. You'll get an email saying, hey, Someone's asking access and you can go bang. Now in this situation, if you want someone to log in and remotely help you program things and do stuff, you're going to want to give them full control. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to log in and do the things that they're required to do. You can change the logging intervals here. Use secure um, connections. And down here, you want to see this no connection error. If you see in DNS error 154 or something like that, the system's actually not connected. And this is the other thing that you want to make sure is on is this VRM two-way communication. So that's actually gonna allow anyone trying to help you remotely, pull the information out of your inverter and actually have a look and help you with anything remotely. Now what you can actually do is actually turn this setting off. Basically once it's done, you say, hey, you know, Mike, can you log in? Can you help me reprogram this and fix this up? And then afterward, there's a few different options you can turn off or you can put a password, you can change it and things. So there's a few different options there if you want for security to say hey, once it's done, it's done. Uh, and the other thing I'll just show you with this here. So if you have given someone access to it. So yeah, if, if someone has logged into your system and done something, Victron actually keeps a record of it here. So you just come in here and have a look and you can see all the different dates, what was accessed, what was changed on the settings and things like that. As you can see here, I've been playing around my system at three in the morning here, making some changes and some settings. Been making some educational videos. You can see everything I've done. It's all recorded there online.
as you can see here, the last contact, the system one minute ago it updated and the system sending information to the Varian portal. If that's not happening, it's really hard to give remote support. So guys, I hope this has been helpful. If you really want to learn more and understand a deep dive in this stuff here, we've got a link in the description below, which is our Victron mini course, which goes into more in-depth dive of all the Victron software products. If you got something in this video, we'd really appreciate the like and give us a subscribe. Until next time, keep you and your batteries energized.